Take your bigger denominator, start finding multiples. The first one that the three goes into, that's your LCD. What is your LCD here? Good. So we'll write that down. And we remember that we're trying to find equivalent fractions here. So we're going to multiply by appropriate number on both the numerator and the denominator. That keeps it equal to the same value. We're not changing the value of the fraction, we're just changing the way it looks. We're purposely unsimplifying these things. So on the right fraction, what are we multiplying by? What was that? Mm -hmm. Just three or three over three? Three over three. Okay. Do we get to show that? Absolutely. Sorry. But I absolutely do need to see that. Yes. On the left fraction, we're going to multiply by what? Yeah. What we're doing here is we're technically multiplying by 1. We just have to show this work because I need to see where the next fraction is coming from. So we're multiplying by 3 over 3 and 11 over 11. We really are multiplying by 1. Do you guys see it? This is 1 and that's 1. So we're not changing the value, we're changing the way it looks. So we multiply by whatever number it takes to make 33. So here it's 3, here it's 11. We just have to do the same thing to the numerator as well. Can you tell me what this fraction is going to become, please? 22 and 33. We still have the minus sign. How about the other fraction? 30 How can you check your work? Subtracting. How can you check your work? Not subtracting. We're not there yet. Yeah, you could. You could simplify this in your head. This should give you two thirds. This should give you 10 elevenths. And it does. It does. So you can try that. Also, you need to make sure that this LCD appears in both of your fractions. That's what it should be. After that, we've got what? 22 minus 30 over 3. Good. Yeah, I want to see that step. We're learning this stuff. I need to see that. So 22 minus 30 on the top. And then on the denominator, how much are we going to have? 33. Hey, how much is 22 minus 30? Uh, 8 or negative 8? Yeah, remember that you could use addition rule here, right? Change that to plus a negative if you want to show that. That's fine. Uh, we're, we're, we're pa if you don't want to show that, that's okay too. If you can do 22 minus 30 at this point and get negative 8, that's fine with me. Uh, for those of you who need that, you could do 22 plus negative 8. Uh, shoot, it. that's the answer. Isn't it? 22 plus negative 30 over 33. Then you would get the negative 8 over 33. Hey, can you simplify negative 8 over 33? Oh, no. no. Uh, but you should check for it. But we're, we can't in this case. Last one we'll do together before we get some on your own here. We're going to look at one eighth, sorry, five eighths, minus one third minus one twelfth. Now we got more than two fractions, but it's still possible if we go ahead and do the same exact thing we've been working with. So what we're going to try to do is, firstly, find a common denominator. You absolutely have to have that. In this case, which denominator are we going to start with when we're finding our multiples? 12. 12. Definitely 12. So we'll start with 12. Does 8 and 3 go into 12? No. Well, 3 does, but 8 doesn't. You've got to find one where they all go into that number. So we can't do 12. We try 24. I know 12 goes into it because that's how we're getting those numbers in the first place. Does 8 go into 24? Yes. Does 3 go into 24? Yes. So that would be our LCD. Now, instead of just two fractions, we're going to multiply all three fractions by some number. Let's start with the 12. Remember, what we're doing is we're trying to get 24 on the denominator of our fraction. Can you tell me, folks, if I have a 12 down here, what number do I need to multiply by to get a 24? Two. I can't just multiply the denominator by that. I also have to multiply the numerator. Let's go over here on the 8. Can you tell me, I have a denominator of 8, I want a denominator of 24. Three. What do I need to multiply by? Three. And that's got to be both on the top and the bottom, the numerator and denominator. Now, Jennifer, you're still okay with this so far. 
Yes, you guys in the back? Okay. How about the middle fraction? Do I need to multiply that one as well? Yes. yes. Yeah, otherwise, I'm going to have a denominator of 3. I don't want that. I want a denominator of 24. I'm going to make some room here. So I want to get 24. What's the magic number in this case? Eight. Eight. Yeah, we got to do 8 on both the top and the bottom. Hey, let's figure out what these fractions are. We got 3 over 3 times 5 over 8. How much is this fraction going to be when we're all done? 15 over 4. Cool. Then we have a minus sign because we had a minus sign up here. We have 8 over 8 times 1 over 3. How much are we going to get there? 8 over 4. Good. And lastly, we've got 1 12 times 2 over 2. That's going to give us 2 over 24. Hey, by show of hands, how many people think they can make it that far? Go right with it. Good, all right. Now that we have a common denominator, we can write this as one fraction. Of course, our denominator is not going to change. We're still going to have that 24. On the numerator, what you do is you simply write every numerator along with the sign. So we're going to have what are we going to have? 15, 15, 15 minus 8 minus 2. Good, minus 2. What this does for us when we write this as one fraction, I want you to see it. It changes a fraction problem into actually just a subtraction problem. We've done problems like that before in this class, right? So as long as we're writing this, doing the process I'm, I'm making you do here, it's going to make things a little bit easier for you. Instead of thinking of the full fractions, now you just have to think of the numerators, and that's nice. That way you can use addition rules, you can change those to plus negatives, change that to a plus negative, use addition rule on that and figure out your answer. Or if you like subtraction, just do the 15 minus 8 minus 2. How much is 15 minus 8? 5. Seven. Okay, 15 minus 8 is 7. seven. seven. And then minus oh, yeah. 2 is? 5. Okay. <laughs> Five over twenty-four. You jumped the gun. She's just one step ahead. Once, just one though. <laughs> just one. Five twenty-fourths. Can I simplify or reduce five twenty-fourths? No. Then you are done. Are you with me on this one, guys? Yes. yes. Okay. I'm going to give you three to two on your own. Follow these steps. Make sure that you are writing this as one fraction before you do the math on that. I, I need to see that. So in our process here, we find our LCD, 
We definitely have to have that. Write these equivalent fractions. So we're changing our fractions here to have a common denominator. Putting them as one fraction and then doing either addition or subtraction. That's our goal. Take about one more minute here and then we'll get started on the board. Okay, so let's look at number one. We got negative one six plus one half. There's one thing I told you to do with that negative. What did y'all do with that negative? I hope you did. Put it on top. Put it on top. Yes. Put it on top. That allows you in the next few steps to keep that negative on the numerator. That way, when you add or subtract it, it's easier. It's not front. You have to worry about it. So then we're going to find our LCD. Our LCD in our case is how much? Twelve. Really? No, six. six. Yeah, just keep it six. Shoot, two already goes into six. May as well. Don't do any more work than you have to. Check, check the denominator itself first. Two goes into six, keep it six. Uh, folks, do I need to multiply this fraction by anything? No. How about this fraction? Yes. So we're going to get negative one-sixth, that's from here, plus three-sixths. We're going to write this as one fraction first. Our denominator is 6, we have negative 1 plus 3. What's negative 1 plus 3? 2. 2. And 2 6 gives us? 1 third. One third. You get 1 third out of that. Remember how we're simplifying? We're doing 2 times 1 over 2 times 3. Whenever you have those common factors, you cross them out and you get 1 third. I, I use 12 and I still got 1 third. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You will. You will. Okay. Stop. Listen, you can use, you ready? You can use what? Love your attention. You can use whatever number you want. You can use 12, you can use 24, you can use 48, you could use 36, you can use uh, 120. Use 126, you use 600, you use whatever you want. What's going to be the easiest? Six. Yeah, you can use any number that you want. You are just making extra work for yourself if you don't pick the smallest common denominator. Are you with me? So you pick 12, sure, but you had to multiply both fractions. I didn't. Are you going to get the same answer? Absolutely. Yeah. This math stuff, it works all the time the same way. As long as you have a common denominator, you're going to be able to solve this problem. It's just going to require you to simplify more at the very end. Are you with me on that? Okay, so that's why we look for the least common denominator.